Spelman is the oldest college for Black women in the world. Founded in Atlanta in 1881 in the basement of Friendship Baptist Church, it was the brainchild of two white New England missionary educators, Sophia Packard and Harriet Giles, who secured financial support of the Women's American Baptist Home Mission Society and the Rockefeller family. In fact, it was named for John D. Rockefeller's spouse, Laura Spellman, and her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Harvey Buell Spellman, who were abolitionists. Many of the school's facilities, including Rockefeller Hall, the Fine Arts Building, and Sisters Chapel, were gifted by this distinguished family. Spellman was initially called the Atlanta Baptist Female Seminary, which later became Spellman Seminary, with a mission to build Christian character and to provide training for teachers, missionaries, and church workers, as well as good homemakers and mothers. From its inception, it was proposed that it merge with its male counterpart, Atlanta Baptist Seminary, later known as Morehouse College, However, the founders strongly opposed this merger, which they believed would center primarily around the education of men, and women would receive only secondary consideration. Music was woven into the fabric of Spellman since its earliest days, having presented a concert with Morehouse during its first year at Friendship Church. Beginning in 1924, there were three year-long female choral directors. By 1927, Kemper Harold firmly established a glee club tradition, having already done so at Morehouse. He simultaneously led both Spellman and Morehouse music departments for 27 years. A virtuoso violinist, Kemper Harold, was well-educated as a graduate of the Chicago Musical College with further study in Berlin. Under his baton, the Spellman Morehouse concerts consisted of works by standard Europeans and Americans, as well as composers of African descent. There were anthems, operatic and oratorio excerpts interspersed with instrumental selections, featuring solo performances by Harold's daughter, Josephine Harold, and Sue Bailey, among others. His students included world-renowned coloratura opera star, Matawilda Dobbs, and Morehouse Glee Club director, Wendell Whalum. Kemper Harold's protege, Willis Lawrence James, succeeded him as Glee Club director for 33 years, from 1933 until his death in 1966. He was a Morehouse graduate who sang in the quartet and Glee Club and played violin in the college orchestra. He was a folklorist who collected, as well as arranged, Negro spirituals, work songs, and jubilees which were often featured on his concerts. Willis James was a close friend of John Wesley Work III at Fisk University and recommended his former music theory student, Joyce Finch, who became Dr. Joyce Johnson to teach at Spelman in 1953. She was hired and has maintained significant service in music at Spelman for more than 70 years as organist, glee club accompanist, department chair, and professor of music. She is also an, a, a very outstanding concert pianist.
Dr. Roland Allison followed Willis Lawrence James as the next long-serving director who led the Glee Club for 22 years, conducting with a pencil as a baton. He came to Spelman from St. Paul's Polytechnic Institute in Lawrenceville, Virginia, an historically Black college, where he served 15 years and developed an outstanding choir. Allison completed his early schooling at the top of his class, finishing college at the age of 18, and receiving the Master of Music and PhD degrees from Indiana University. During 1972, the Morehouse and Spelman Glee Clubs and the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra premiered the first professionally staged performance of Scott Joplin's opera, Trimonitia, with T.J. Anderson's orchestration. In his tenure, Glee Club members performed in Brazil, at the United Nations, at President Jimmy Carter's inauguration, and at Lincoln Center. Upon Allison's retirement, Dr. Norma Rayburn was chosen to head the group for the next eight years, from 1991 through 1999. She received degrees in music education under Harold Decker at the University of Illinois and the Doctor of Musical Arts degree in choral conducting from the University of Iowa. She taught at Eastman and at the State University of New York before coming to Spelman. During her time, the Glee Club, along with Morehouse, performed with Jesse Norman and the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. Lastly, Dr. Kevin Johnson has led the Glee Club for the past 25 years, beginning in 1999. He received the BA and MA from California State University, Los Angeles, and the DMA in choral conducting from the University of Missouri, Kansas. He also attended seminary and has worked in Catholic churches as a musician for numerous years. He came to Spelman with no prior experience or knowledge of HBCUs. When Johnson auditioned for the choral position, he could sense that the women were hungry for something new. Therefore, he included Douglas Miller's gospel song, Unspeakable Joy, teaching the vocal parts by rote. This gospel selection won him over and brought musical expansion to the Glee Club's repertoire. The ensemble has toured throughout the United States, in Europe and Canada, and performed at the White House for President Barack Obama, and premiered performances with the Atlanta Ballet and the Atlanta Symphony under his tenure. Over the past 100 years, the Spelman Glee Club has continued in the long shadow of the Fisk Jubilee Singers tradition by featuring Negro spiritual arrangements along with European and American song literature. Their conductors have collected African American folk songs, arranged, published, performed, and recorded them. The ensembles have extended their repertoires to include popular music, jazz, dance, and gospel music. Spellman's performance practices have been a synthesis of a polished European vocal style with African-derived hand clapping, foot stomping, body movements, drumming, and hip hop accoutrements. No longer do they feel the need to prove that they can perform the European classics or uplift the race from minstrel stereotypes as the Jubilee singers did, but can be themselves 
whether singing a Latin motet, a Negro spiritual, or rapping. Their century-old singing tradition has been transformative for them and for their listeners. 